More and more Irish retailers are trying to attract Chinese tourists by employing store assistants that speak Mandarin and Cantonese. This follows an increase in the numbers of Chinese coming here with the help of the Visa Waiver Programme. In a moment, we'll be hearing from the Ireland-China Business Association. But first, our reporter Ashling Reardon went out to Kildare Village, where they're actively encouraging Chinese tourists to visit. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking we're in Beijing. But no, it's our very own Kildare village that's turning into a somewhat mini China. Well, maybe that's a bit dramatic, but there has certainly been an increase in the numbers of Chinese visiting. We've seen an incredible growth during 2012, and that's continuing into this, into this year. And um, a lot of that's to do with the um, visa waiver. Uh, scheme that was launched a couple of years ago and that has been extended now until 2016 and in addition to that we also have a global marketing department um, that focus in many areas including them in particular China because it's our largest non-EU um, traffic into our group. Now Kildare Village is actually part of a company called Value Retail which has nine outlet villages across Europe and the demand has been so strong there are plans to open up the first village in China next year. And the team on the ground here has been busy developing ways to attract more Chinese shoppers. Our website um, is available in four languages which includes again Chinese. Um, many of our brands are looking to hire Mandarin speaking staff again to sort of ensure that the experience for that customer for that international customer is is a one and then we also work with tour operators tour operators who are very keen to draw on the new opportunities of drawing chinese tourism into this market my name is lily i'm working for the church about uh, 10 months already here my name is melanie and i work in NTO almost three years and my name is ting ting and my family name is Lin. I'm trying, just uh, trying to help the different uh, visit, Chinese visitors because I'm speaking Mandarin. And if they come here and they feel comfortable to talk with me, and they can use their own language and they feel comfortable. Now, Kildare Village plays host to a number of luxury brands. And it's these brands that are attracting the Chinese shoppers here. My family always come every second month because I have a child, I have father's mother. They are the love from Kildare Village. My parents uh, came here to visit us so uh, I thought it's nice to bring them. Have you bought anything? No. Not yet, yeah? Not yet. <laughs> what, what would you like to get? New runners. <laughs> and sure why not, although Daniel's new sister is exhausted from all the shopping. Well, for more on this, I'm joined in studio by the chair of the Ireland-China Business Association, Ken Duggan. Ken, uh, good morning. What we see there in Kildare Village, is that something we're seeing in other places around the country? Yes, um, as I think in fairness, Brown Thomas is one particular organisation that have employed Chinese staff and there's Chinese staff in a hotel in Cork and in several other places in tourist locations that are considering bringing in Chinese staff. Uh, one of the reasons is we've got a huge number of Chinese students uh, in Ireland. There are 800 of them in UCD and all the third level colleges have extensive relations uh, with Chinese colleges uh, back uh, in various cities in China. And so therefore there is a huge labour force there that is willing to work here and to assist the Irish to bring in more and have the facilities uh, available to deal with uh, uh, foreign uh, Chinese visitors to this country. And is it that people are coming from China to Ireland or are they coming to Europe and tagging on Ireland? I think the phenomenon of uh, tourist travel is, is the same all over the world. Our American visitors who come, most of them like to come and see Europe. They don't just come for Ireland alone. If they're going to come this distance and spend that kind of money, they want to get value. And likewise, a lot of the uh, Chinese foreign visitors uh, would like to see Europe. Uh, I mean, in terms of actual commercial trade, Germany almost commands 50% of the total of European volume of trade with China. It's greater than the combined of the UK, France and Italy. So therefore, there's an awful lot of Chinese are interested in coming to Europe. I mean, we had that, sorry, we had that visit of the Deputy Prime Minister as well Xi Jinping, la last year, yes. um, which would have highlighted Ireland. It would, and it was a tremendous, and I think it was uh, all over um, 
Chinese national television and indeed when our own teacher Enda Kenny visited and I was with him on that trade mission, uh, that was a huge success in terms of highlighting Ireland. I think the like all good actions, they have to be followed up. And I think one of the things that has to be improved is the visa requirements. Now, the Schengen uh, visa is a separate to the United Kingdom and Ireland, mm -hmm. but it means basically the Chinese have to take two visas. Uh, and yes. the other thing, until we get direct flights into this country from China, then we will probably see quite a, an explosion in the market. And just finally, does business have any concerns over human rights? Because, I mean, Amnesty in their report last year can't quantify the numbers that were put to the death penalty mm -hmm. in uh, China. Mm -hmm. Does that concern business people? Um, anybody who does this business in China knows that if you just confine yourself to business, you will fail. Um, you have to broaden the scope to understand the cultural and the political. And I think, yes, uh, anybody who's serious about doing business in China has to be concerned about the human rights, has to focus on it. And certainly in all discussions with anybody about any areas of disagreement, you do it from the point of view of communication and friendship and trust, not from megaphone di diplomacy. So I so would regularly, with Chinese diplomats, bring this subject up and they would admit privately that they need to do a lot to improve their human rights So situation. do it softly, softly through the contacts. I think I'm so. I'm going to have to leave it there because we are out of time, Ken. But Absolutely thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.